Hello, welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Jamaica's television, sorry, on Television Jamaica's YouTube ch channel or One Spot Media. We are also live on Music99 and GoJamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subject, you can send them in to Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on CSEC English A, and I am Ardeen Reed Virtue. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're here to focus on persuasive writing and more specifically, advertisement. Now, since we are on the business of advertisements, why do I not just use that particular tone to tell you our lesson objectives for today? Students, students, TVJ in partnership with the Ministry of Education and yours truly bring you live persuasive writing lesson. Our objectives are extract implied information, recognize the range of techniques of persuasion employed by mass media, evaluate the effectiveness of language devices used to persuade, CXC 2015 English syllabus. Stay tuned, we're here to have some fun and learn. I see a one in your future. Did you like that? I think I like it too. All right, let's delve right into it. Now, apart from those objectives, we also focus on the sub-concepts that we'll be paying attention to for today. So we'll be looking at the products or services in advertisements. After all, when you get an advertisement on your multiple choice paper, it functions in the same way as the regular comprehension passage does. So you are expected to understand the literal information stated. So identifying products and services, figuring out who the target audiences are. Sometimes these questions are implied, right? And then you also look at techniques which require some kind of technical or critical thinking. You go beyond the information that is stated. Now to recapitulate some of what you already know about persuasive advertising, let us focus on a simple definition that is offered. Persuasive advertising is a component in an overall advertising strategy that seeks to entice customers into purchasing specific goods or services, often by appealing to their emotions and general sensibilities. So in a nutshell, Advertisements that are meant to persuade seek to convince you to buy the goods or service. If it's not a goods or service, sometimes it persuades you to take an action. For example, you see a poster that is advertising a dance. It's not necessarily advertising a service per se, nor a good, but requires you to take an action, meaning they want you to attend, right? Now, since you will interact with different types of advertisements on the multiple choice paper. It is important for you to understand the difference between the informative and the persuasive advertisement because sometimes you are given questions that asks you what is the purpose of the advertisement and if the purpose is primarily to inform and you answer to persuade, you know you're in some kind of trouble, right? So, definitions. Informative advertising essentially provides the customer with hard data about the nature and function of the product. So if a company is advertising a cell phone, for example, they will only focus on the specifications or the features. If at the end you decide to purchase it, well, that will be done based off your own initiative, but not based on the language that, that is used because it will not be persuasive. However, persuasive advertising gives the assumption that the customer already knows something about the product. And so the focus is to convince you about the desirability and the benefits that set a particular product apart from the competition. So in this kind of advertisement, the persuasive advertisement, there is sometimes comparison Persuasive language is used because they want to use the tone of convincing you to buy the product or service or to take an action. Let us look at appeal of advertisements. So when marketers go out, they investigate their market, right? And they try to figure out how can they make advertisements persuasive. Persuasive, sorry. In order for you to understand the purpose of an advertisement, you need to also bear in mind what is the appeal? What are they seeking to attract you by? Is it your feelings, your interest? 
Let's take a look at some of the appeals. First, some advertisements appeal to your need to belong to a particular social class. When we think about the hierarchy of society, do you want to buy a product because you want to be seen as sophisticated? Advertisements also appeal to the need for security, need for success, and it also appeals to your interest. We are going to look at some pictures and we're going to examine them to see if we can apply what we know about needs to figure out what need each advertisement is appealing to. First one, Sajikor and their tagline is wise financial thinking for life. Now is the appeal need for security, need for success? Is it appealing to an interest? Or is the answer D, which means it's appealing to both need for security and need for success? What do you think? I hear somebody all the way down in Clarendon saying, I think it's A and B. Well, you're correct. Indeed, this is appealing to our need for financial security. We put some money aside to ensure that, you know, grandparents talk about rainy day. We are financially secure. If we get sick, we are secure. We also recognize that the advertisement is appealing to our need for su success. So we need to be successful in life and a part of that process is to save our money, make wise investments. All right, another picture. Forever 21, advertising fashion, look at it. What is it appealing to? Need to belong to a social class? Need for security? Need for success? Or is it interest? Hmm, I wonder. Yes, if you chose interest as in D, then you are indeed correct. Some people may consider need to belong to a social class, but is it really appealing to that particular need? Does a poor person want to be associated with upper class society? Not really. It's really appealing to those people who are interested in fashion, being fashion forward, meaning you want to be seen as somebody who is conscious of what to wear. All right. Let us look at another one. Alcor windows and doors. Which one do you think is the answer? Yes, this one is quite obvious, isn't it? B is the answer. Need for security, literally, because nobody can break through the Alcor windows and doors. And we are going to take a pause right here. School's not out. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick 
by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick. Out, where we are discussing CSEC English A. Before we went to the break, we were looking at the appeals of advertisements, and we've also looked at what it means by persuasion, convince you to buy a product or service or take an action. Now let's look at another example of an advertisement. Tell me, what do you think the appeal of this one is? It says, 
most yachts were never designed for charter. Just that first sentence. What does it imply? What is it seeking to appeal to? Is it A, need to belong? B, need for security? C, need for success? Or D, interest? Hmm. There may be more than one, but which one is the overarching appeal? A, it is. Need to belong to a social class. Let's look at it. Everybody defines success differently, right? And then there may be some people who are interested in owning a yacht. But when we look at A, it is seeking to separate some people from the other classes of people. So everybody can be successful, but we want to set up a demarcation between the people who own the yacht as opposed to the people who charter them or rent them or just go on them to spend holidays. So we're setting up the idea of belonging to a particular social class because even in upper echelon of society, that class is also stratified. People belonging to the top, the middle, and the lower state. Understand? I'm sure you do. Let's look at target audience. So we've dealt with appeals. Now, who is our target audience? The target audience is a specific group of people within the target market at which a product or marketing message is aimed. So it is not all the times that the target audience is general public. We have to look at the information we're given in the advertisement to determine who our target audience is. For example, a company is advertising a cell phone, let me use that example again. Would it be general public who would be interested? Of course, bearing in mind that most of us need to communicate and we want to have a cellular phone in order to get that done. Let me think of another example. An advertisement about a game for children that teaches them educational concepts. Would the target audience be general public again? No, the target would be the children themselves and parents because children would need their parents in order to purchase that particular software. All right, now let us practice. You're going to identify the target audience for each of the advertisements that we looked at. For Sajikor, who do you think the target audience is? If you're thinking that people who want to be financially stable, people who are interested in investments, people who want a secure future, yes, you are correct. The children, sometimes students in schools, they would not necessarily be the target audience, even though there are some teenagers who are very active in investment markets. So we need to think wisely. So we cannot just say everybody for every advertisement. Next. The one about the yachts. Who is our target audience for this one? Of course, people who want to live that kind of lifestyle, yes? The man with the money, the rich, the famous, the people who want to have these luxuries, they would be the target audience. Alcor, windows and doors. Who is the target audience for this one? Yes, homeowners and potential homeowners. Because before building, people do consider what types of materials they would find more durable and useful to include in their plan. Finally, Forever 21. Who would be our target audience for this one? Would it be everybody who wears clothes? No, I don't think so either. So the young, the hip, the fashion forward. Even though we know in Jamaica we have some old people who dress young, but would they be the target audience? No, because Forever 21 wouldn't be making a lot of money from that group, right? So the young people who want to be dressed in the latest fashion, you want to maintain the youthful look. Now, if you answered correctly to all of those, then of course we're gonna do some dance. Hey, not long dancing now, sit in your sofas. We're continuing this lesson. Getting out of control, I see down there. Parents, you're my class monitors. Make sure they're paying attention. All right, we're transitioning to talk about techniques. We're delving beneath the surface now. This is where we have to bring in all the critical thinking capabilities that you developed in literature class.
and you developed in you know your regular language classes when you're looking at comprehension you have to transfer those skills because if you want to do excellently on the multiple choice paper you cannot be stuck at just identifying information identifying techniques but you don't clearly understand how to explain effectiveness so we are going to do some work on that now so what are some techniques techniques are really strategies that are used to convince you the consumer and there are several examples of techniques some of which are listed techniques include emotional appeal diction comparison research evidence experiments testimonials and i want to say this on a rhythm celebrity endorsement exclamations and questions alliteration visuals and graphics jingles and slogans pun repetition exaggeration humor and a whole lot more what do you say dj fit me uh, we'll work on it all right apart from that long list do you know of others i'm sure you might so these are techniques. Now, when you go to the multiple choice paper, seek to identify the techniques used in the advertisement. Then begin to ask yourself, why does the writer select this particular technique? How does it help to convince me to buy the good or service? Contemplations. All right. Now we are going to apply. The task is, Identify the technique used in the bolded sentence. The bolded, the bolded sentence says, you may get lost, but not in the crowd. And this is an advertisement for the Porsche. What do you think the technique is? Is it A, exaggeration, B, testimonial, C, pun, or D, alliteration? What do you think it is? Yes, Kingston, you feel warm with the answer. What about St. Mary? Paying attention there? Yes. All right. If you decided that the answer is C, then you are absolutely correct. Why is it pun? Which word gives a play on it? Which word carries a dual meaning? When you decide on your answer, you have to test the answer. You have to look for evidence to support. Does this sound familiar to your regular English language teachers? Yes, ma'am, they're always asking for justification. All right, pun, look at this word, lost. What is the dual meaning? You may get lost, but not in the crowd. Lost meaning you may be on your journey in your Porsche, driving along the highways, and you make a wrong turn. Have you ever had the experience of driving with a male? and they decide that they're not going to ask the direction even though they don't know where they're going and you get lost and what do they say oh it's not lost we lost man you just know another route uh-huh so what is porsche saying it's okay to get lost on the road in the porsche because you're driving in style furthermore it's fine because the probability of more people seeing your porsche as a result of your taking the wrong term turn they are okay with your getting lost but being lost in a crowd oh no 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 mister and madam when i'm driving in my porsche i can't be lost in the crowd because i am the center of attention look at me i'm hip i'm cool i'm modern luxurious <laughs> so we get the play on word be lost on your journey, let other people see it, but never go unnoticed in the crowd because you need to be recognizable. You need to take all the eyes and the stares on you. Get that? I'm sure. Another one. What I want for you to do, you are going to watch this advertisement. You're going to identify the techniques used and then we're going to seek to explain the techniques. Now it's an old Digicel advertisement. Maybe some of you are too young to know it. Let's see if you recognize it. Yo, my dopes. And where you get the new crush, the daddy? You don't know the party. I can't me a job for you. You look happy still, you know? Yeah, man, you don't know, man. I have a little job called Miss Up where I'm to you with you. Yeah, man, I get the F. You get the F? Yeah, man, the phone. Did you sell phone? The real thing. Fantastic official network. Excellent rapper. I tell you better. Oh, you mean you can't switch from me. You have to stick to the original. I tell you, man, look at you, that horror come up network, the man. 
Come like them like a zinc rooftop when the hurricane it just blow down. No coverage. <laughs> no coverage. But you learn, so you know. You learn, man, because you don't know me yet, man. You don't think you're on that. You start up. I ain't on a pool. No pool. No walkie talkie. This is the real thing. This is the real thing, man. You see me? Yeah, man, where you talk about you move up. Yes, and say drop them broke all party there, trust me. I tell them and them for clear out. Clap, yeah, yeah, yeah clear that mess out. Yeah. It's not about the moment for move up and look there. Drop and broke up, broke up, stand me, I tell you. I feel like I can bust and you that. I'm going to it. Okay. Now we know these two, two characters more popularly by IT and Fancy Cat. So we're going to refer to them as such, right? Now, did you detect any techniques? Of course you did. In the last part, we should have got the slogan. slogan. Do you know what the slogan for Digicel is? Yes, man. Jamaica's bigger, better network. Yes? What kind of technique is used in that slogan? If you're thinking alliteration, then you're correct. Let's write that on the board. So the first one we have is alliteration. If you saw humor as well, yes, you are also correct. But any other? All right. What about contrast or comparison? Any other technique? I'm hearing imagery. And embedded in the imagery is symbolism. Now we're going to focus on these three. We've identified the technique, but now we need to take it a step further. Before you can respond to say, yes, these are techniques in the advertisement, you need to go back to the advertisement and find your evidence to justify that these techniques actually exist before you select the A, the B, or the C, or the D in the multiple choice. Don't be pen happy or pencil happy. So what's the evidence of alliteration in the advertisement? If you're thinking the slogan, then yes. Jamaica's bigger, better network. Doesn't stop there. What's the effectiveness? Why did they choose the repetition of the B sound in bigger and better? Why do you think? Is it a forceful sound or does it come out sounding soft? Forceful, right? But why? Yes. The B sounds help us to remember, so aids memory. Remember the slogan for one. And two, the kind of strength that we get from the forceful B sound conveys the strength that Digicel wants us to associate with their service. Does that sound plausible to you? I think it can work. So let us write effectiveness. Aids memory, that's one. And two, gets us to consider the strength of the service or coverage. All right. Now let's look at compare contrast. How is this conveyed in the advertisement? We do realize that they hinted at another network, right? So there's a comparison between Digicel and the other phone company. But what information do we get about the other company that seeks to set up Digicel as the better choice. All right, so we hear that the other network is like zinc roof. Yes, it doesn't give enough coverage. And if a hurricane comes, the whole of the zinc roof blow off. You heard it, right? They are so dramatic, I know. So what does this comparison mean? That when compared to Digicel, Digicel gives you more security, right? It is safer. And what does this mean? It secures you and makes you safer. Well, we could analyze that it means that in times of need, when you want to communicate with someone, you aren't left vulnerable. The signal won't go. You're in a case of emergency. Unlike the other network, Digicel will always give you connectivity. Now, whether you believe that or not, that is a different argument. But we're just looking at the techniques used and the effectiveness of them. And finally, let's look at imagery. How is imagery used 
in the advertisement. And we know that imagery takes care of all images, meaning visual image, auditory image, kinesthetic image. What types of images do you see in the advertisement? We have visual, of course. We do see kinesthetic with Mr. Fancy Cat limping by. And we have auditory as well because, of course, we hear them. Now, the outstanding ones, the imagery. And I'm going to call him Mr. Fancy Cat because my mother told me to put a handle on people's name when they're older. Right. So Mr. Fancy Cat is there limping because he has been injured. Right. Why does Digicel use that type of image? What do they want us to take away? How are they seeking to convince us? Even after we've turned off our televisions, we're left with that mental picture in our mind. So they have sought to affect our psyche, meaning we associate the lack of security, the lack of safety, being vulnerable to the other network. And we do not want that type of association with whatever cellular phone company we take our business to. So let me write the evidence here the injury contained in the video. Effectiveness, we associate lack of safety or security with the competition. And of course, when we think about Digicel's network, we are thinking the opposite that we are more secure, we are safer, digital service is strong, we'll always have connectivity, as I said, and they will be there when we want them to work. Like I said, effectiveness, you have to be able to explain because sometimes the questions that do come on the multiple choice paper require you to detect or decode the effective use of strategies or techniques in the advertisements. And you must be able to go to the passage or the advertisement, I should say, and find the particular evidence that justifies that indeed these techniques are used and they are effectively used in the advertisement. So I had that there and we've explained that. Now, there are some typical questions that are included on the multiple choice paper. You may need to determine, like I've said before, purpose of the advertisement. So is the advertisement seeking to persuade or is it seeking to inform? What is it seeking to do? You also need to figure out who is the target audience. Identify the techniques used and explain or select the answer that explains the function or effectiveness of techniques. Apart from these that we have already looked at, you are also given questions that require you to explain the meanings of words and phrases. So what have we done so far? We have looked at the fact that persuasive advertisements seek to convince you to buy a good or service. We've looked at the target audience, meaning that main group within the, in the, within the market that the advertisement is seeking to appeal to. We've also looked at appeals, meaning what is the, uh, what is the advertis advertisement using or seeking to cater to in order to convince you? Is it appealing to your interest? Do you want to be associated with a particular social class? Do you have a need for security? etc. And we listed some techniques. Do you remember any of them? Yes, we do have testimonials, research evidence, slogans, music. You won't hear music on the exam, but that is also a technique, exaggeration, etc. Now we are going to pull all of that together and apply to a sample question and let us see how well you will do on this one. I want you to read the advertisement. Maybe you want to take a picture of it with your cell phone. So when we transition to the questions, you'll still have it to look back at. So take some seconds to read it and then I am going to read it for you.
All right. I hope you identified what is being advertised. So let me do the second reading for you. Newly renovated snack time restaurant, 46 Queen Street, Queenstown. Too late to reach home for lunch? Rush into snack time. Want a bite after the show? Drive in to snack time. We serve juicy hamburgers, tasty hot dogs, refreshing milkshakes, delicious ice creams and sundaes in the twinkling of an eye at snack time. I like my voice, you know, it can work. <laughs> All right. What is being advertised? If you came up with a restaurant called Snack Time, then yes, that is the answer. And we get some items that they serve at Snack Time. We get some information about what time of day you should drive in because they're there to serve you. Now let's look at some questions. The first question says, the words in bold print at the beginning of the advertisement are intended to do all of the following except, now look at the most important word, except, meaning the advertisement does three out of the four, so which one doesn't it do? Make sure you pay attention to the stem or the questions you are given. So does the advertisement, does the first part of the advertisement focus the reader on the type of service being advertised? Does it draw attention to the features of the business advertised? Does it emphasize the benefits of having lunch at the location? Does it immediately draw the reader's attention to the information? Let me go back to that slide before you decide. So it's asking you to look at the words in bold at the beginning of the advertisement. Newly renovated snack time restaurant, 46 Queen Street, Queenstown. Let's go back to the question. Which one doesn't the bold words do? C, emphasize the benefits of having lunch at the location. Nowhere in that information do we see any benefits being argued. We get information about location. Yes, we do. And we get features of the business. And of course, because it's bold in print, our attention is immediately drawn to the to the information at the top. Let's look at question two. In the advertisement, the phrase newly renovated suggests that the surroundings look more attractive, patrons will be more welcome, quality of the food has improved, or service will be quicker than before. Look at the options and decide. What does newly renovated mean? If you decided that A is the answer, excellent job. Surroundings look more attractive, meaning snack time, the restaurant has done some work to improve the look of the building. They have refurbished it, right? So A is the answer. Now let's look at B, C, and D. Why wouldn't any of these be correct? Let's look at B. Patrons would be more welcome. There is nothing contained in that phrase that suggests people greeting you at the door or your seating in comfort or that kind of thing. It's basically talking about the infrastructural development of the restaurant, right? Even though as a result of the infrastructural development, you may feel more welcomed because the environment may become more pleasing, but that's not the meaning of that particular phrase. So don't be confused. Look at C, quality of the food has improved. Hmm, we don't renovate food, yes? <laughs> so we have to take the concepts, the words, their meanings in context of how they are used. And then we look at service will be quicker than before. It says nothing or it implies nothing about the speediness or the quick service that you are offered. So D would not be the answer. Let's look at another question. Number three, in the advertisement, in the twinkling of an eye means the same as, very carefully, B, under the stars, C, very quickly, or D, with sparkling. Now for those of you who go to church and you hear the 
the elders sing songs that contain in the twinkling of an eye. You might know what the answer is. So what is it? Meaning, very quickly, C is indeed the answer. It's not very carefully in the twinkling of an eye in Jamaican language by the time you quint the food reach. Now that's a technique there too. Do you recognize the hyperbole? Yes, because we know that literally one blink won't cause the food to be ready. Nobody's as that quick. So very quickly, B could not be the answer because we're not taking it literally that the people are dining under the stars. It is not meant to convey a surface meaning. And with sparkling, that one would definitely be O2 because this answer as well is literal meaning and they are seeking to convey a characteristic of the service, meaning it's very quick, it's very quick or speedy. Let's move on to another question. According to the advertisement, which of the following does snack time claim to offer? Does it offer A, quick service and reasonable prices? B, prompt service and enjoyable snacks? C, nutritious snacks and takeaway service? Or D, reasonable prices and pleasant surroundings. Read them again for yourselves. Which one does snack time claim to offer? Let's look at A. Is it quick service and reasonable prices? That one would be out, right? Because we do not get any information in the advertisement about the cost of food. So this second reason is the distractor and causes A to be incorrect. B, prompt service and enjoyable snacks. Feeling warm on that one? All right, let's bear it in mind as we look at the others. C, nutritious snacks and takeaway service. Hmm. What is the distractor in C? Do you see it? Is it nutritious snacks or takeaway service? Nutritious snacks, right? Because they serve hot dogs and other junk food. So those would not be considered nutritious. And let's look at D. Again, we have the distractor of reasonable prices. Remember, we do not get the cost of any food. So this one would cause D to be out. So yes, the answer is B. Prompt service in the twinkling of an eye and enjoyable snacks, right? Let's move on to question five. The advertisement is not designed to appeal to the diet conscious eater, cinema going crowd, busy office worker, fast food enthusiast. Which one doesn't the advertisement apply to or appeal to, I should say? Which one is it? Is it A, diet conscious eater, B, cinema going crowd, C, busy office worker, or D, fast food enthusiasts? What's your answer? Yes, A is the correct answer. It is not appealing to diet conscious eaters. Again, we go back to the point about junk food not being nutritious meals. So this one would be out, A. We move to number six. Which of the following literary devices is not used in the advertisement? Now, before you decide on your answer, remember that we need to go to the advertisement to justify all the ones that we say are indeed present in the advertisement. So think about it. Do you see metaphor? I think I gave away per hyperbole. Do you see repetition? Is there personification? Which one is out? So we know hyperbole is contained. Is a technique used? Is there a metaphor, repetition, personification? Which one is not used? While you think about that, let me go back to the advertisement. So we had Personification, metaphor, hyperbole. What isn't in it? 
If you said personification, you are a bright spark. What is personification? Yes. When you give life to lifeless things, when you give inanimate objects human-like qualities. So nowhere in the advertisement do we hear that your stomach is going to do somersault because of the scrumptious meal. Or we do not hear that the, the cushion on the chairs will hug you as you sit in comfort. None of that is contained in the advertisement. So since I've already spoken about hyperbole, remember we identified the example of in the twinkling of an eye that is grossly exaggerated and when we think about some restaurants that tell us that they will serve us within five minutes even within five minutes we still have to wait so when you get to the restaurant and you go there do not test this because it will not work because if you do a blink and open your eyes you're going to see an empty table still so exaggeration is indeed contained where is the metaphor? Do you see the metaphor? Yes, the metaphor is also contained in, in the twinkling of an eye. There is a direct comparison between two things. And what are the two things being compared? All right, the twinkling of an eye literally you blink and the service that is provided at the restaurant so those two things are being compared so the characteristics of blinking meaning the speed at which we do it is being transferred to the kind of service that they claim to offer at snack time and then there is repetition of course and one example of repetition is snack time big and bold why is the repetition used? What is the effectiveness of it? Why do you think? Yes, it helps us to pay attention to the name of the restaurant, remind ourselves of it, and we cannot forget to associate speedy service and scrumptious meal with snack time, right? Did you see any other, apart from these, did you see any other technique used in the advertisement think about it let me quickly go back to it apart from those that we have mentioned look again at the advertisement and tell me for the benefit of those in radio land i'll just do a quick reading again of it so newly renovated snack time restaurant 46 queen street queenstown too late to reach home for lunch Rush in to snack time. Want a bite after the show? Drive in to snack time. We serve juicy hamburgers, tasty hot dogs, refreshing milkshakes, delicious ice creams and sundaes in the twinkling of an eye at snack time. Do you see or did you hear any other technique? Yes, don't be such a show off. Yes, the other technique that we were yet to identify is the use of questions. Oh no, well, bright. All right, so we have the first question here. Too late to reach home for lunch? And then we have another one. Want a bite after the show? Yes, and what's the effectiveness? These questions get us to contemplate our everyday experiences and the fact that whenever we are in a rush and we cannot get to cook for ourselves, snack time will be there for us. It's been awesome teaching you this lesson on advertisements today. I wish you all the best in your exam. That's all for today for CSEC English A. We hope you grasped some of the concepts, some of the points we discussed. You can watch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN Today at 5 p.m. and in the school's Not Out highlights on Saturday between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. right here on TVJ. It will also be on video demand, One Spot Media. Until next time, I am Ardeen Reed Virtue. Stay with us. Caribbean Studies is up next.